Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode. So, we finally have Vulcan ready to go, we could actually start using it for things, but it's still going to be a while to actually have anything physical on the screen. Uh, right now we're creating a window, but Vulcan doesn't really have a good way of sending anything to a window. So, we're going to need to set up a few things, we're going to need to create what's called a surface, which is what we're going to be doing in this episode, that's what Vulcan is actually rendering the images to. Then we're also going to need to create a swap chain, which is what's going to send images continuously, and we're actually going to need to create uh, those images themselves. So in this episode, we're just going to handle the surface object. Um, this is sort of like a virtual window in a sense that Vulkan is looking for and understands how to send images to. Uh, first off, we actually need to create the surface object. So like everything else in Vulkan, we are going to need to create uh, an instance of it. So, what we do first is we're going to create another handle, and I'm actually going to drop that handle right here just before the physical device. So, just like every other handle, we're going to use the vDeleter wrapper again, so it's going to be vDeleter. And the type of this is going to be a VK Surface KHR. So, VK surface khr there you go and we're going to just call the surface and of course we always have to pass it all of the necessary information so we're going to give it an instance just like so and then it's destroy function which is going to be vk destroy surface khr exactly what you would expect and there it is so that gives us a surface, and I'll explain why we put it right there in just a second. We're also going to need a function to create the surface itself. So let's go ahead and declare that. Oh, it's right up here. So just before the physical device again, void create surface. Just like that. We're going to just bring that right over into the CPP file, as always. So I'm just going to stick it here before I forget. We want to call that. And again, make sure that it goes right before the get physical devices. I'm, the, the reasoning for that is the physical devices are going through the rate device suitability function, and we actually want to make sure that it can handle uh, sending images to the surface. So that's going to come into play when we choose a physical device. So we need to actually create the surface first. So then we're going to drop right down here, and because of the placement, since I said that we need to get it before we do the get the physical devices, I'm just going to drop it right there. Alright, and it's of course Planet Vulcan, create surface. And this is where things get a little bit tricky. Because normally you would have to fill out all of the, the normal information. You'd fill out a create info, just like any other Vulcan object. Uh, then you would call VK create, and you pass in all the details you need. But the problem is it would change depending on the platform. If we were on Windows or if we were on, you know, Android, things would get kind of mixed up. And this is where glfw is going to come in a little bit of handy because there's actually a command which is glfw create window surface. And that actually takes care of a lot of the stuff that we normally need to do for us. It's going to initialize everything we need based upon whatever our device is. We don't need to worry about all that. So that's really nice, and we're going to fill it out the way we usually do for any sort of check. It's just going to be if glfw create surface does not equal vk success. If it doesn't, we throw an error. So throw std runtime error, and we're just going to go ahead and say I'd rather not have weird capitals failed to create window surface. And then else, and we'll just say uh, window surface created successfully. Because we would like to know that it worked. Yeah, we don't need an exclamation mark. We can be excited, but I don't think we need that much excitement. All right. So that'll give us all the information we needed, and of course glfw create window surface does require some parameters. You'll notice it needs an instance, a window, the p allocator, 
that we always pass in and then the surface. And we have three of those. We have the instance, as always. We don't have a window because we created that window object separately. That was something that is being handled by the test game. We're going to need to convert that in a second. So we're just going to skip that for now. Then we're going to need a uh, null pointer, of course, because we're not worrying about the allocator. And then surface, again, because we use the vDeleter, we have to call surface.replace. And that will take care of it. So let's get to that tricky window problem right here. So over in tester game, that's where we actually declare a window. We have mwindow.create, and we have a window declared that's part of the PV engine. That's not going to work for us. We, we really need to be able to access that window. So I'm going to convert things a little bit right here. Now, I may decide to change this up a little bit later on, but for now, this will take care of all of our needs. So we're going to jump over to planetvulcan.h. And since we need the, the window to be an actual part of the of the engine, we're going to create a public window that other things can access. Again, I don't know if we want to keep it that way, but for now this works and it solves all our problems. So we're just going to declare a new window. Let's call it ah, window object. And of course, it's not recognizing window because we haven't included it. So right up here, include window.h should fix that problem. Yep, there we go. Windows recognized. So now that we have that, we actually want a way to create the window without having to do it from the tester game. So what we're going to do is in planetvulcan.cpp at the top, we're actually just going to tell it to create a window now before we do anything. So before it creates an instance or anything, we're just going to say window object, because we have that now, and just call create. So this is going to be our new window that we're actually referencing. Now that we have that, um, the engine is always going to assume that it has this window object. So in tester game, we don't need to call mwindow.create. In fact, we don't even need mwindow anymore because mwindow isn't going to exist. Tester game doesn't need its own instance of a window, at least at this point. We may, again, change our minds later. So we're going to delete the window in tester game. We're going to delete the call to create it because it's already been created. And down here in the game loop, instead of saying mwindow.window, we're going to say it is the uh, engine, so m engine dot window object dot window. So what that's doing is it's going into the engine, then it's looking for the window object, and because in window dot h we gave it a window pointer, that's giving the actual glfw window object to tester game. So now that we have all that, everything should run nicely. And if we go back to uh, planetvulcan.cpp, we still have that error because we needed to pass in a window. So since we didn't do that before, why don't we do it now? So just window object dot window. And that's everything we need. So now that we have all that, things should compile and run the same way they did before. Let's check if that works. Give it a moment. There's our window, and it doesn't close because it's continuously checking everything. That looks like I have a random plus sign in there. There it is. Physical device found plus. We don't want that. I don't know how it got there, but we don't really need it. All right, so moving on. Now, technically, our surface is being created successfully, but if you remember earlier, I said that up here, we create the surface before we get the physical device, and that's because the physical device we select is going to be based upon whether or not it can send messages to a surface. So we're going to need to modify the is device suitable. And to do that, we're going to need to modify this struct we had, the Q family indices, because we're going to have to look for a Q family that can support sending images to a surface. Before we were just looking for one that had any sort of graphics commands, we're going to need this as well. And technically we could store different indices for the graphics family and for the surface command family, but I'm going to look for a Q, that a Q family that handles both of those at the same time. So what we could do is we could make two separate integers and it would just call is complete if they're both filled, but we're actually going to combine them instead. 
So I'm going to need to rename a few things here. We're going to, right here where it says graphics family, since it's going to handle both uh, sending to the surface and uh, rendering graphics, I'm just going to call it display family. That may not be the best name for it, but it'll work for our purposes now. And we have to change it down here as well. Perfect. And now that we have that, we're going to go back to the find cube families function. So right over here in CPP, uh, where is it? Physical device, suitability, logical device. There it is, find cube families. So within this, we're actually going to need to modify it to handle the surfaces as well. So first off, we are going to need to change the names of all these occurrences. Uh, we'll get to that in a second, actually. So right now, inside, right here, this is where it's grabbed all the cube families and it's iterating through each one. We're going to add another little section before we actually store the index. We're going to create a vkbool32, and that's going to be present support. So this is whether or not it has support to present to a surface. And we're going to initialize that to false, because we're going to assume that it's not the case unless it finds otherwise. And to figure out whether or not it supports things, we're going to call vk get physical div uh, sorry physical device surface support khr. There it is. All of the Vulcan commands are pretty long and wordy. And we pass in. We're going to pass in the device that we're checking. So that's just called device. It's right up here. Then we need the index that we're at, which is going to be i, the surface that we found, ah, there we go, and the present support. So it's going to go ahead and set that bool based upon what it finds from this call. So that'll check everything we need. And then down here, before this was only checking if we would found a queue family that handled graphics. So we need to add one more check to make sure that it handles uh, presentation support as well. So we just put another AND, and we're just going to check the value of present support. So now, both the presentation support has to be true and it has to have graphics capabilities. And then we'll assign the index. And of course we're going to change this to display family, because that's what it is now. And that should handle all of that. Up here, I'm also going to swap it for the get device queue. We should have some more uh, right here in the queue family index. All right, so that should take care of all of those. And once again, one more minor naming change because we're finding the queue right now, and I'm still calling that graphics queue. Since we're now handling everything within a, a grouped display, I'm going to rename that one as well. Down here we have that handle to graphics queue. I'm going to call it display queue. And I'm going to copy that because that's going to screw up some things again with the naming. And we just have that one occurrence right here, so we're going to override that. So now it's fixing display queue instead of graphics queue. So that's pretty much all we need to do this time. That's creating the surface and then verifying the physical device we choose operates with that surface. Let's give it one more run just to see if it all works out okay. And we'll check all of our little pop-ups here. So once again, instance created, debug, the window surface is created, physical device found, and logical device created. Everything's great. So that's really all for this video. It's a little shorter than usual, but that's okay. In the next one, we're going to start working on more uh, components to handle displaying. We're actually going to be creating the swap chain, which is what holds all of the images that are waiting to be displayed on the surface. So once again, thanks for watching, everyone. As always, if you have any questions or comments, just go ahead and leave them on the video, and then subscribe if you'd like to be notified when I release another.